Today, John Coleman and I are with Dr. Liz Lister, who specializes in all things over 50. <laughs> Dr. Liz, we're your audience, babe. This is it. We're over 50. <laughs> yeah, we, we sure are. I'm, I'm particularly feeling it. And it's, of course, it's that time of year when I have to go back to the gym. You know, we're going to start seeing bathing suit advertising and things like that. But I know I've got to go back to the gym and get back on my exercise schedule. Not that I ever had a good one. But you're there, you're our hormone expert, among other things. And I was wondering how will exercise affect my hormones? Wonderful question. It's really impressive and remarkable how many different hormones are impacted by exercise. And everything that we're talking about here is, of course, related to cell function and metabolism. So I think it's very interesting to learn about the hormonal impact of exercise, especially when we're working on weight loss, right? Everybody joins the gym at the beginning of the year uh, and usually goes a, a little bit. And then, of course, for most people, it drops off. Uh, but once we learn a little more, hopefully it'll be a little bit of an encouragement uh, for our listeners to keep going and keep doing that exercise. Well, we all so, need encouragement. Okay, but you said that, uh, let's talk about the hormonal uh, changes, and uh, maybe I can uh, throw a bit of a curve into it. Uh, anybody who's watched these uh, uh, videos all the time know that uh, I actually do cardio about five days a week, including, uh, I do about a half hour to an hour on a, a bike uh, uh, down at the gym, and I practice Tai Chi a couple of days a week, and that's all cardio. But I've also started doing um, uh, weightlifting. So I go three days a week uh, for maybe a half hour, and I do four or five exercises. I just started on building up. Any difference between cardio and uh, for hormonal balance and changes in your hormones between that and, and resistance or weight training? Well, there's a lot of information out there, a lot of it conflicting. I could definitely speak generally about exercise. What is good about what you're doing is that variety, as it is with our food, is very important also with exercise. So we know that, for example, weight training and building muscle and strength is very important. Uh, however, cardio, weights, as long as you're building stability and core strength, that's really important, especially for us over 50 and beyond. As we keep going, we want to avoid frailty. We want to keep our muscles as best we can. So the fact that you're doing a variety, that's really important. All right. Now, I do have so some of the hormones that are affected. For, let's, let's start with testosterone. Yeah. Testosterone is for women and men. It has a different impact in women and men, obviously. However, we both, we all get a benefit in testosterone levels with exercise, right? So it's, it actually helps boost. So exercise helps boost testosterone production. This is something a lot of people have heard, and it is true. This, of course, helps with maintaining muscle. It helps with brain function, mood, energy. We've talked a lot about testosterone before, and uh, we know that it has a lot, a lot of benefits. So that's one hormone, okay? Another hormone that's affected is growth hormone. Growth hormone release also goes up with exercise. The interesting thing about growth hormone is that it is often released in a delayed fashion. We mostly release growth hormone at night while we sleep, all right? But doing certain kinds of exercise will boost our growth hormone production. And again, we've talked about this, but just a little quick reminder, growth hormone helps kids grow, but for us adults that are, we're done growing, we're not gonna get taller, but we're going to have cell repair from the release of growth hormone. And that's just going to help everything that we're working on in terms of healthy healthy life and good health span, not just the long life span, but we want a good health span. 
right? Mm -hmm. So growth hormone's good. So for example, when you're on the bike, the type of exercise that really helps with a more of a boost in growth hormone production is burst exercise. Burst mm. is often called hit and high uh, intensity interval training. Uh, there's a lot of different names for it. Tabata is one of my favorites because it's very short. So I really like that. Uh, so when you're on the bicycle, you can do this. So anyone who has their favorite form of exercise, what the feature of it is, is stopping and starting. All right. Now I know all the vehicles are becoming electric, but uh, with gas powered vehicles, when we're on the highway, and we're going higher speed, but more steady. We're not stopping and starting. We're using less fuel. When you're city driving, you're stopping and starting a lot, and that burns more fuel, as in burning more calories, mm. right? So burst exercise accomplishes that, and it promotes growth hormone production. So that's, that's all really good. Easy to add. You're on the bike. You can do the stopping and start starting 30 seconds, 60 seconds with short rest. That's what I'm talking about for a burst. Great. Okay. Good information. Couple, yeah, yeah. A couple more. Neurotransmitters. A lot of people have experienced the kind of exercise energy boost or it helps with mood. All right. That's definitely the case for me. I got out on a beautiful walk this morning. It was earlier than I know to go, and uh, it was just beautiful. It was really, really something to be outside. And also just to start the day that way, it was really, really a booster. So dopamine in particular, uh, that's that. It, it makes you want to do it again, all right? The anticipation, neurotransmitter, brain hormone, uh, and serotonin. So serotonin is also boosted by exercise. Uh, and of course, we are aware of serotonin as connected to sleep. All right, one of my patients is very, she has drawn a very clear connection between her sleep is consistently good and she is up in the morning consistently exercising. She just knows that that is what works for her. And so most likely she's getting a really good serotonin boost helping her sleep, helping her brain function, memory, digestion. Uh, so we've got these neurotransmitters, all right? Well, I have to tell you that uh, 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 my takeaway today is this uh, burst uh, uh, exercising, which I'm going to add uh, tomorrow morning. I'm going to start right there because I know where I can do that on the bike. That's that's great. Yes. But I know I have, I have not been doing that. And when I've done it in the past, actually almost accidentally uh if nothing else it was a, a variety uh that uh was pleasing uh but i, I sort of get lazy nice. and uh, i go i i go on the fat burner i don't know exactly what but it's consistently increasing the amount of resistance and it gives you a little bit of break but it's all the same speed uh so my yes. takeaway today yes. is burst i have a burst of energy now and and uh, I'm going back to the gym, maybe as soon as we end this interview. That's great. That sounds really good. I'll look forward to hearing about that. Check out Tabata. When I first started talking about this with mm. patients, it was hard to find on the internet. Now it's really easy to find on the internet. Tabata is four minutes long, although you can repeat oh. the four minutes. So in the four minutes, it's 20 seconds of a burst, 10 second rest. And that's repeated eight times, which is four minutes. And what you can find are Tabata songs. You can make a playlist. Do you <laughs> listen to music while you're exercising? I, I no, I, I I watch uh, in the morning business news and uh, when I uh, okay. uh, do the way right. when I do the way the thing in the afternoon, uh, I have nothing. Okay, well, well I, I guess I, I could could listen to music, but I just I haven't done that. Give it a try. You could give it a try. I'm I'm only recommending it because I know I listen to audiobooks and podcasts, so I know it. Mm -hmm. But when you want to do a burst workout and you get Tabata songs, they tell you when to stop and start. You don't have to watch the clock. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, very helpful. So we've got a lot of hormonal benefits to exercise. That's uh, 
the bottom line, you know, most people experience feeling better when they're exercising regularly. Yeah. And uh, in fact, we have a lot of hormonal uh, benefits under the hood when we are exercising. Good. Even, even more reason to uh, get back to the gym and exercise. That's right. Tabata. That's my word of the day, Tabata. You know what? I'm gonna find I'm gonna find out a link to at least something that explains Tabata to the general public, and we'll put it in the description below. Well, Art, for you, Art. you don't have to do Tabata. You could just put some uh, uh, hum hum to the uh, Dow Jones average. Ah, yeah, no, my, one of my favorites, one of my favorite melodies. Yeah, <laughs> Doctor Liz, thank you so much. Great information as always. And a new perspective on exercise for me, anyway. Thank you. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.